Okay, let's take a small uh, example, a problem for you to think about. A university had done a data analysis exercise to build a model to predict the first semester GPA of a set of prospective students as part of its admissions process. In other words, it's considering some students and it's saying, okay, for each of these students, can we predict what G their GPA will be at the end of the first semester? Okay, so it built a model and it then applied the model to data on 1000 past students. Okay, data that it did not use to build the model. Okay, and it found the model to be satisfactory. And it had used data on a set of 2000 past students to actually build the model. Right. In other words, it had data on a total of 3,000 students. It used 2,000 of those to build the model and 1,000 to you know, see how good the model is. Okay. So given that, uh, so what was the size of the training partition? What was the size of the test partition? Okay. So it will be a good idea for you to pause the video at this point, you know, press the, press the pause button, and then just identify how many cases were in the training partition, how many cases were in the test partition. Not a difficult problem, just think about it. And then once you're ready with the answer, you can uh, continue the video and we'll discuss the answer. Okay, so obviously, uh, you know, it used 2000 cases to build the model. So that's the training partition, right? And uh, it used 1000 people to evaluate the model. That's the test partition. Okay, so the answer is 2000 training, 1000 test. Okay, one more little problem for you to think about. Uh, a membership warehouse like Costco or BJ's is about to introduce a new product in its stores. It would like to predict the number of units of the product that would be sold in the first week. Okay, how might they use data analytics to make this prediction, to build a model for such a prediction? Right. In other words, think about what would their data set look like, right? What would be, you know, some of the columns or attributes of the data, okay? So once again, like before, pause the video and then, uh, you know, think about it a little bit before you continue the video and look at my suggested answer, okay? So in this case, it is possible that, of course, they could use historical data on the past first week sales of other products, other similar products. Okay, the tar target attribute, of course, would be the number of units sold. And some of the predictor attributes could be things like, what was the price of the product, right? Here we are looking at historical data on other new products that they brought into the warehouse and information on how those products performed, right? So obviously price matters, okay? And the department to which the product belongs, is it electronics, cosmetic, personal hygiene, food, etc., etc., and the time of the year in which the product was introduced and, you know, specific holiday period. You know, for example, that's the first week that we are talking about. Does it include some special holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, Labor Day, etc., etc., okay, and so on and so forth, okay? So we could look at all of these attributes and probably many other attributes and use the historical data on all of these attributes plus what was the weekly sales for the product for that particular for for a particular week right so we could use all of these attributes and try to build a model and then of course we would partition the data and then we would apply the data to a test partition of that historical data which we did not use in model building right and then we would be able to evaluate the model okay so in supervised learning we use data partitioning that's that's just how to evaluate the model uh, okay, so supervised learning is about having historical data on predictor attributes as well as the target attribute and using that to make predictions. Usually, data, uh, supervised learning also involves data partitioning, but not really, not always. Okay, and we understand what data partitioning is, dividing the data into a training and a test partition. Okay, so of course, we are talking about supervised techniques. Obviously, there exists some unsupervised techniques. In other words, in supervised techniques, we have a so-called correct answer, right? We, are, we have a target attribute and we are trying to predict the value for the target attribute. That's what supervised learning is. In unsupervised learning, the goal is different. The goal is not to predict some value. The goal instead is to just understand the data better and some important ways in which you might do uh, unsupervised techniques. One is 
to segment the data and detect patterns. In other words, we say, well, we've got, you know, 200,000 customers. Okay. Can we broadly divide these 200,000 customers into, you know, five salient chunks of customers? Just five groups in such a way that all the customers in the group are very similar and in one group are very similar and customers who belong to different groups are fairly dissimilar. Right. In other words, we are trying to say, can we identify a set of cohesive groups in co a small number of cohesive groups into which we could partition our entire set of cust customers or whatever else. Right. So that's what is called uh, cluster analysis. OK. And that's one example of an unsupervised technique in the sense that there is no right answer. Right. You just do it. You could you could make five partitions, four partitions, 10 partitions, 200 partitions. OK. So what is good simply depends upon your subjective judgment of what you can work with. OK, so that is uh, unsupervised technique. It doesn't have any target attribute to predict. OK, a common uh, application of unsupervised technique is data segmentation or cluster analysis. OK, but that's not the, that's just an example. OK, some other examples of uh, unsupervised techniques are affinity analysis, where we try to say, uh, which products or you know which things seem to go together that is one thing uh, data reduction is also an unsupervised technique in the sense that you may have 200 attributes right but 200 attributes is too many to work with let's say you want to reduce the number of attributes then there are some data reduction techniques like uh, uh, you know principal component analysis and so on factor analysis and things like that which will allow you to club together several attributes and combine them into a single attribute and finally, work with a smaller set of attributes. That's another example of an unsupervised technique. There's no correct answer. You're just, you know, doing what uh, seems to make sense, what seems to be reasonable. Okay. And also unsupervised techniques are things like data visualization, right? You've got a large data set. You just want to make sense of it. And you just visualize the data in many different ways. In other words, you create all kinds of charts that help you to understand the data better. That's it. There is no prediction. There is no target attribute that you're trying to predict. That's what is unsupervised techniques.